I'm looking at the screen. It's still <laughs> counting down. <laughs> oh, there we go. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Indie Loves Black Romance in 2021. Um, an open, honest dialogue um, with six amazing Black women <laughs> who are bloggers, authors, um, publishers, avid readers, reviewers that um, I personally vetted to have this conversation. Um, I am Indy Love, if you don't know. Um, a little shy, not really, not for real though. But um, <laughs> I wanted to have this conversation because um, of something that was prompted a couple of weeks ago um, and it stirred up a lot of controversy. So I said, I have this habit of thinking of things and then not moving on them. And um, a couple of people was like, yeah, you need to do it. You, you need to have that conversation. You, nobody else is gonna do it. You need to have that conversation. So. Here we are to have a conversation. Um, I'm going to start off by letting each person introduce themselves and tell us just a little bit about you. Um, we could start with Rochelle. I don't. I hope Rochelle's in the same corner as I can see. We're gonna start with. She's probably gonna hate me for that because she don't like to go first. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Just tell us a little bit about yourself, Miss Rochelle. All right, my name is Rochelle Winchester, and I am a library, a school librarian, library media specialist. I teach at high school, live in Metro Atlanta. Originally from New Orleans, I have been reading black romance, <sighs> thanks since the 90s. So I go back, it's been a while <laughs> since I started, and I'm happy to be here. And I'm a major, big supporter of Indie Love and independent black writers as well. Yeah, Rochelle is on my team. She's part of the team. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm gonna go, uh, I don't know if it's my left or y'all right from what I'm looking at, but I'm gonna go with um, Lena next. <laughs> Hi, I'm Lena. Um, I am a teacher, I teach kindergarten, but I have been reading black romance for a long time. I start with Urban Lit, but Gradually got introduced to romance, contemporary romance, and been loving it, loving it ever since. And I have um, attended some indie love events and fell in love with even more authors because of those events. So, and I'm a reviewer as well and blogger. How can we find you, uh, Lena? You can find me on Instagram at Lena Saltz. Awesome. Okay, then I'm gonna jump down <laughs> to Crystal. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm Crystal. I'm the voice behind My Love of Books. Um, that is my name on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I'm not a teacher, but I do work um, for uh, one of the big insurance companies as a supervisor. And I've been reading since I was able to read, but I just recently got into Black Romance with our indie Black authors um, two years ago and love it. Um, I have two of my favorites on here with us, so yay to be <laughs> on here with them. And I'm really excited for this um, opportunity. Thank you, uh, Miss CCJ. Hi, everybody. Um, I am Christina C. Jones. I am a Black romance author. Um, I've been writing since 2013. So, Lord, I have to look at, <laughs> I'm looking at the date in the corner to see what year it is. Uh, <laughs> it's 2021. So, um, I've been writing Black romance for about eight years. Um, and yeah, I, I love what I do. I love this community. I love being able to just dip into so many different characters and bring their stories to the forefront and help, you know, help my people feel seen. Awesome. And Miss Allegra. Hi, y'all. I'm Allegra Williams. Uh, professionally, I work in the oil and gas industry, but in real life, I'm a reader. I'm a reader of Black love. I'm a lover of Black love. Um, mm -hmm. I 
am in a book club with my good sis Ayana, uh, Bourbon Street Bookers. Uh, we read, we interview, we blog, we review. Um, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Miss Allegra. And then there's Miss B Love. Hey y'all, I apologize in advance if I have any type of connection issues. Memphis had a horrible storm this morning, so just throw that out there right now. But I am B Love. I have been a published full time author for a little over five years now. I'm known for my urban romance, but I do urban romance and contemporary romance. I have over 115 books published, and I am the founder of B Love Publications. Awesome. Again, thank you, ladies, um, for joining me today. So I'm going to dive right on in. And whoever wants to answer first, feel um, free. Um, what does Black romance mean to you in 2021 as an author, blogger, reviewer, um, avid reader? Whoever um, wants to go first. <laughs> I'll say that it means everything because I've been reading since like I was a little girl, all the way back to Nancy Drew and mm -hmm. Sweet Valley Twins. And then my mom is also an avid reader. My mom always read like Harlequin romance. Mm -hmm. So when I became, she used to give me her books, probably at an age younger than I should have been reading it, but <laughs> she used to give it to me because she knew I loved to read. So um, I want to say like in my teenage years is when I, you know, discovered like, Terry McMillan and you know mm -hmm. people like that. So once I started seeing like there are people that look like me that's doing this. So you know it means everything to me. It's nothing like reading about that melanin. It is very I I won't say that I only read black authors because I don't. I have a few faves on the side that I'll pick up every now and then. But 95% of the time I'm reading something written by a chocolate person. <laughs> yeah, I definitely agree with Allegra. It's, it's nothing like black romance and pretty much started out just like you did, Sweet by the Hide, Nancy Drew, all those. And But once I got introduced, it was like I fell into a rabbit hole and I just did not know how to get back out, nor was I trying to get out. I, I loved it. And I enjoy reading about people who look like me and are in same situations that I am or may have gone through, you know, similar experiences. So it's 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 phenomenal. I love black romance. You on uh mute, Michelle. You can't get off, Rochelle. You can't. It's not. Can't it's showing you. that you're off and you're yeah. very, very low. So maybe it's your headphone. Well, I'll dive in while Rochelle figures it out. Um, I think my first book. I remember reading. I'm telling my age now. Judy Bloom. Um, <laughs> a Judy Bloom book, and then um, I remember my mother gave us. Um, me and my next door neighbor were best friends. Um, a Alice Walker book. Um, I know it was a color purple, but then it was another one that she gave me um, that we read. I, and I'm gonna tell you, I, I didn't understand a lot of it, but I read it because she encouraged me to read. And then they don't do this anymore in school. Um, but one of my electives at the time, tell him, telling my age, it was called electives back then. Now it's specials um, that. It was a class called Reading for Pleasure, and I was in heaven. I got to sit in the class for a whole hour and just read. I mean, that teacher had to have the easiest job in the world. And all you had to do, she gave you a sheet, answer these questions, and you got this grade. And I think that's when I really just fell into in love with reading. And then I... I hit Eric Jerome Dickey and Terry McMillan, and it was on. It was on from then. It was just on and popping for me for then. And then we hit Indy Arthur's, and you could forget about it. I'm not <laughs> <laughs> touching nobody else. I mean, you know, you're still your faves, but I'm. I'm. 
I'm stuck with, you know, supporting my um, indie authors. Uh-oh, we lost Crystal real quick. Hopefully she'll be back. Yeah. Um, can everyone hear me now? Yeah. 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 Um, I basically fell in love with Black romance. Um, I would say what I think it would be Eric Jerome Dickey. I, you know, he was contemporary Black fiction, but it was the beginning. And um, just like what, um, what Josh said, it was it just opened up everything because before that, the only thing I read being a social studies, former social social studies teacher, the only thing I read was, was nonfiction books. If it wasn't a biography, it wasn't real, I didn't read it. But when I discovered I had I went to the library and I discovered his book, and I think it was Milk and My Coffee, uh um a friend's one of them. And after that, anything I could grab hold to, I, I read. I read. Um, Bridget Jackson, Francis Ray, um, oh, you know, it, it just went on in anything. Like I say, Beverly Jenkins, another one I picked up, I would read. And when I discovered I was on Amazon, I was searching for something to read and I came across, um, um, Andy, uh, I think it was Love's first book. And I was like, what are all these reviews? What are all these, you know, everybody, something must be going on with that. And once I read Love Balvin's first book, and I discovered Christina and it was strictly business. And I went, you know, after that, I fell in love and I've been hooked ever since. You know, I still have to read for bit, you know, for work. But, you know, when it's time for pleasure, that's what I'm, that's my go to. You know, and I'm I'm just, I'm thankful for Amazon because it just gave us so much access to so many different independent writers that we wouldn't have had access to prior to that, you know. So that was my introduction to black romance. Um, well, my interest, my start of black romance was Terry McMillan, um, Eric Jerome Dickey, Elin Harris. Like, I mean, you know, you don't hear too many people say Elin Harris, but Elin Harris was one that I shouldn't have been reading when I started reading them. And I actually, once I started getting on Instagram, going to Indie Love um, first event in 2019 is what introduced me to, yes, <laughs> is what introduced me to our Indie Black authors. And I'm glad I went, I came back home and I just started going on Instagram looking for everybody. And then CCJ popped up, Be Love, um, D Rose, The Cold Falls. And I fell in love ever since. And this was the reason why I started my love of books because I had to sit here and tell everybody about these authors. Now, see, I didn't know that. I didn't know. I didn't know that you had gone to an event. So I don't want nobody to say, "Oh, you pick people that would." <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> I didn't know um, Lena mm -hmm. had been to an event until she sent me her bio. So just so we're yeah. clear, I didn't bet them on that. <laughs> I bet them on what they do and how they support <laughs> the yeah. community. You know, let, let, let me, me say, say one thing, love. Uh, in uh, Josh, uh huh. You are also the reason why I got into all of these indie authors mm -hmm. because just like Richelle, I listen. My favorite ever author was Eric Jerome Dickey on everything he has ever written, mm -hmm. and once I discovered African American writers, I I got into Black expression. Yes, and, Black expression. Yes. And yeah. that's how I was reading. Well, when I stumbled upon Love Belvin, one day, then I stumbled upon CCJ through Love. And yeah. then they were promoting your indie love. I mm -hmm. said, well, let me see what this is about. So then when I got into that is when mm -hmm. everybody else popped out and now I'm broke. And that's, that's how I'm broke. <laughs> like, well, that's what happened to me too. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. now I'm broke. <laughs> I think I, I found CCJ first. I know I found CCJ first and she was just popping out books, just popping out books. <laughs> and it was like, okay. And I was stalking Amazon and um, the whole nine. And then someone recommended Love. I kept seeing this, her, the whatever her cover is, the clock or whatever. And I was like, mm -hmm. I'm not reading that. And I read this now. And I tell her this, this is not something I haven't said to her. I read the synopsis <laughs> and I was like, I'm not, I don't want to read about that little young girl. I don't want to read that. <laughs> and I happen to be in LA. That's where I'm from. And a friend of mine, Angela, was like, Josh, every place that you're going, 
that you're checking in is in the book. You need to read it. And I was like, nah, by now she's promoting um, Fenton and Zoe. So I'm like, nah, I'm waiting on that one because in promos, I ain't never seen nobody do no promos <laughs> like that. I'm, I'm waiting on that one. And they kept saying, no, I'm telling you. And then I went on ahead and jumped on uh, Lip and it was ah. CCJ and <laughs> Love and, you know, then I, I, you know, came across Nia. Like, so I'm like, Rochelle, Amazon really opened the door mm -hmm. for you to really start finding, um, you know, uh, Arthur's, um, indie Arthur's on top of that. And then um, I came across Be Love and I was like consuming I was just like, so it was nothing for me to read three books a week. And, you know, people know me. So it's like, what you reading this week? What you reading this week? Don't worry about it. I got it. I'm, I'm, I'm good. And then when I moved to Atlanta, I didn't know nobody. I had some family here, a little bit. of. So what else was I going to do? We in the house trying to get to know the city. I'm reading. So, yeah. Yeah. CCJ or B-Low, you guys can take it. I can go ahead and go. Um, I think that my introduction was like a lot of y'all's. Um, I grew up in a very, very, very white area. Um, still in a very white area, but, you know, um, and I had read everything. I had read, you know, all the Little House on the Prairie, all the Nancy Drew, all the Boxcar Children. And I'm, 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 saying, I'm telling you those to tell you how young I was when not my school librarian, but the the sweetest white lady on earth at my public library, I had read everything and she put Air Jerome Dickey in my hands because that was the only stuff they had that had any black people in it was the Air Jerome Dickey, like Crystal mentioned, the Elin Harris. Um, I was reading Disappearing X and I was like 12 years old <laughs> reading Disappearing X. <laughs> And stuff like that that I really I had absolutely no business with my hands on. And I one of you mentioned, you know, not really understanding it. And there was a lot of it that I that I didn't understand, but I knew I knew that I was in there. You know, I knew that people who looked like me were in there. And so it 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 drew me. And from there, I think as I got older, I kind of got away from it. And I started reading like, you know, Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings. I was a nerd. So <laughs> I went to, you know, I went, I went to all of that kind of stuff. But then as an adult, I started writing and then I was able to kind of make my way back. And that was how I really discovered, you know, the indie community is how I met love. It's how, you know, like all these different things unfolded. And like, we'll talk all the time about how, like when we started writing in 2013, like the indie community didn't really, like that wasn't really a thing yet. Like we were like right on the cusp of it and we had to really fight to get respect it. We had to fight to get people to even be willing to open our books and pick our books up. And it's amazing because of events like Indie Love, like Behind the Pen, et cetera, et cetera. These events have connected us with readers. Girl, have you way, read that Don't way? Slice so, yourself. I ain't want to put I ain't want to plug myself. <laughs> but, <Plug. laughs> but those events have just like I saw just such a clear difference. Like after Indie Love, you know, you were the first one who who was willing to even like let to invite us. You know what I mean? Nobody else was inviting us anywhere. Nobody else was, you know, was checking for us. But there was such a clear shift after Indie Love, like that really just kind of solidified us as a community and really like we like we here <laughs> and we ain't going nowhere. Um, and now, you know, here we are a lot of years later, like it's, it seems like it's been it seems like it's been longer than it has. The first Indie Love was 2015 or 2016. We started was talking 16? about it in 15. Yeah. OK, OK. That's what it was. Yeah. But yeah, it, it, it doesn't even seem like it's been. It doesn't seem like it's been that long, but then it also seems like it's been longer just because it's everything has changed so much. Like the entire community has changed so much. And I'm just really I'm, I'm grateful that 
that this place exists? Be love. Gotta follow that. Wow. Okay. Um, <laughs> for me, black romance has always been hope. I had an early start as well, but it was kind of because of unhealthy losses. So I was trying to find something that showed me what black love could be without really realizing that's what I was doing. So I was all over the spectrum from Herb and the Triple Crown to Contemporary Romance with Donna Hill, Francis Bay, Brenda Jackson. Those are my faves and who I originally wanted to write like and be like. I didn't even become aware of how monumental the ebook industry was when I first started because my goals were traditional paperback <laughs> published author like my face. So when I got into the industry as a full-time self-published author in 2016 and saw how readers gravitated towards Black romance, how they felt seen and heard by these authors who were writing Black love stories, it kind of felt like all of the hope that I had given my Myself from maybe 2005 to 2015, it was my turn then to turn around and get to them. So a decade of reading from the most ratchet urban story to the most contemporary beautiful love stories, it was finally my turn to get it back. So it was hope for me then, and it's still hope for me now, just in a different way to get it back. Okay, so that leads to my next question. Um, and I, I know the answers, but this is just, you know. Is there a true difference in urban romance and black romance? And what is the difference? I think that the difference is the street factor. Um, I love a good urban book. Mm -hmm. It's just the little hood in me that I love, but you can't tell me anything about black romance. That that urban that street book you're gonna have more street than you're gonna have loving, you know. And it, it's a neither one is better than the other, but mm -hmm. it's it's only so much street you can read. Like I tell people all the time, I I love um I love Kawan. I read his animal series. It's one of my favorite series. Mm -hmm. But I could never reread that. And I'm a rereader. I'm a heavy rereader. I could never reread that because of how heavy and hard the book was. When I finished reading that, I had to go watch rom-com just to get myself back together. So it's a great big difference. Um, Beloved, you write some of both, correct? Some I'm romance. Coming, yep. <laughs> this um, and, some, er, and some and some urban so for you as an author mm -hmm. and as a publisher um because you put out some of your authors put out romance and then others put out urban how do you what what is the difference can you like what is the the ultimate root of the difference okay so by technical definition mm -hmm. anything that has african-american Latino audience set in an urban <laughs> small neighborhood with sex, drugs, or violence is urban fiction, urban romance, urban love stories. So technically, by definition, anything that has those things is considered urban fiction and urban romance. But by Amazon's urban chart <laughs> definition, anything with the streets, anything with drugs, anything with bad boys, anything with drama, whether it's coming from internal, external conflict, baby mama issues, whatever the case may be, that's what's being heavily represented as urban romance now by Amazon's mm -hmm. chart standards. When it comes down to just black romance, contemporary romance, whatever you wanna call it, that's pretty much anything else that doesn't have that street element, the urban undertone of the drug dealing, the gun toting, the fights and the violence, whatever the case may be. That's the clear separation of the two. And I've done both. My authors have done both. 
Um, for me personally, even with street lit, such as what she was mentioning with Kwan, that's that's hardcore street lit urban fiction. And we don't even get a lot of that, unfortunately, these days on Amazon. What we're getting is more so just a very crazy, entertaining, roller coaster ish rides that may have that street element because of a drug dealer. So, oh, I could talk about this all day. But to wrap it up, that's the main difference. And I think both are super important because we have readers who understand and have experience that street life, that hood life. And then we have some who may not have experienced that and don't want to gravitate towards that or they can't understand it or they can't relate to it, but they may find it entertaining. So what I love about us as Black authors, Black authors, we are able to present all of these different variations of Black love to ensure that everybody who's picking up a book looking for themselves can find something that looks like themselves. So whether doctor, lawyer, drug dealer, pill pusher, they will be able to see who they are and what they want and what they need. So I have a question for CCJ. How does it feel when someone, and I got receipts, <laughs> refers to some of your writing as urban romance as opposed to black romance? Mm -hmm. So initially, um, at first, I would be I would be offended. Like, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't write urban, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But then I had to interrogate that. Like I had to interrogate myself. Wait, why are you offended? Mm -hmm. Like, is something wrong with urban? You know, do you feel, you, you know, do you feel like that's what it is? Um, and I had to like really dig down deep into that because if you're offended by it, you know, is there some anti-blackness in there? Like you gotta, you, you got you got a problem. You didn't always, you know, you didn't always live in a little cute neighborhood. Like, what, <laughs> like what's up? And so I had to like, really, you know, I had to really sit with that for myself. And, um, and I, and I realized that more than anything, it was, it was the idea that just because my characters are black, just because somebody might say nigga is like, okay, now it's street. Like our, our language, you know, our code switching, our, like our, our lingo, our slang, all of a sudden, because a character does that, it makes it street. Um, and I didn't, and I didn't like that. Like, I didn't like what felt like a stereotype getting placed on my work just because of what, you know, some of the characters might say that reflects like, listen, I have friends from all over the spectrum. I have friends that could, <laughs> that could orate right next to Obama. And when we are together, somebody <clears throat> then brought out the little, you know, the, the honey jack and we're all together. You might hear all kind of nigga, motherfucker, whatever. You might hear all kind of stuff like that come out of their mouth. And so I don't like the idea that language is an indicator of education or class or whatever else like that. Like that grates me. <laughs> mm -hmm. That grates me a whole lot. And um, and I what I've what I've most recently come around to my most recent feeling about it is I don't like it because you're setting a different you're putting you're putting a different expectation on my work. Like if I if someone has been reading, you know, I don't I, I don't like it. Somebody has been reading someone who's huge in urban romance, and you say, Oh, you should read some CCJ. She writes urban romance too, baby. You're about to be disappointed. Like, <laughs> you can't take somebody from reading, you know, the cartel and send them to go read. Oh, yeah, go read love notes. Like, no, like, <laughs> it's just not the same thing. And it's not to say right. that what I write is better than that. It's just different. And so <clears throat> I think that people should be mindful of not calling something urban romance or black romance or rom-com or whatever like we have these words that describe the books for a reason and so if you're going to use them you need to use them correctly so that you're and and that's out of respect and reverence 
for the community. Because if you're positioning yourself as someone who you're you're the person to go to for recommending books, you should know, you know, you should be recommending to people what they're looking for or what they're or what they're asking you for instead of using instead of because you oh they said nigga so it's urban you know with it is takes place in a small college town <laughs> you know so that's that's, right. that's that's mostly where i am with it at this right. point i i was i don't know whose group i was in and i saw someone say that they loved um <laughs> ccj's urban romance um because the doctor was able to something about use some some language, and I was like, "Did we did all right?" <laughs> That's not over Roman. There's a there's there's a strong yeah. um, difference. Um, another example, because Bailey writes uh, has some um, a church scene, or mm -hmm. you know, um, one of her characters may be a minister. People want to put her in a box and say that it's Christian, and it's not because uh two chapters up somebody was having sex and they was cussing and they <laughs> you know <laughs> and christian romance is real is real cookie cutter they don't do yeah any of that they we going in the room and shut the door and that's well you know what's getting ready to happen but you don't get the details of yeah that if you even you know get that so there is a difference there's nothing wrong i don't think there's anything wrong cuz i i'm like allegra i will read some they got me reading some urban romance right now. I'm not going to call the person out who put me on this train. Um, and I can't <laughs> seem to get off this train and I'm going to ride it out. But um, <laughs> it's true. Like it's true urban. I mean, they killing, they cussing each. I mean, and it's like, oh, I'm going to need some, I'm going to need some rom-com when I, when I finish this. But I know that already. I know when I'm in that, that mode, I'm going to have to jump to some lovey-dovey, loving on, you know, each other. So I, I know the difference, but I know a lot of people um, get it confused. Uh, I wanted Ayana to put that comment back up about being somebody put in a box, but she might not be able to find it. Um, I, I think the problem is that people are equating urban with black. Because you're black, you're urban. And let me tell you something, that is not the truth. Because the little parish that I work in is 97% white. And when I tell you these are a different kind of white folk, <laughs> and I will definitely refer to them as urban white folk, if you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so I think that that's the issue. People are just, if you're black, you're automatically urban. Right. This comment um, by Martha, your work should not be placed in a box. Labels bring limitations. Um, what is anybody's thoughts on that comment? I want to comment on that. I definitely agree with that because if you are put in a box and so if I heard that CCJ only writes urban, I don't want to read urban. I'm not going to pick up her books. And then now she's being boxed with me as only an urban writer when that's not the case. And I'm not like I read urban, but like you said, um, Joss, I don't read it all the time. So when I, I do read it, I need to go back to something that make me feel feel loved. I want to be touched. I want to be hugged. I don't want to be thugged out all the time. But if we're limiting on what they're writing, then we're we might be missing out literally missing out on a good author who writes about everything. And I like the fact that some of our authors do write about different things. They're reaching out to different genres and trying them out. And sometimes it works, sometimes yeah. it don't. But I don't think they should be labeled because then they can be boxed in and then we won't read anything else from them or we won't pick them up because we saw, oh, she's urban. Yeah, I don't want to read that. So I'm not going to pick her up. So yeah, we probably need to stop with the labeling of you know, I mean, that's just my opinion. I'm not gonna tell everybody else to stop doing that. But my opinion is I, I've i never been in the box. Like I do what I want when I want. So I feel like as our authors, they should be able to do the same thing as well. And I say, stop putting people in a box. You know, just because we're black, that don't mean we urban. Not every black person is an urban black person. And okay. I, I think it depends on the box for me. 
Um, because I know they're like a big, a big thing that I had that would like, like burn me up. Um, I haven't seen it as much recently uh, because I think because be, being black, uh, being writing black romance is cool now. It's cute now. You get the diversity points now. So they don't mind it so much now. But um, a lot of my traditionally published peers would, you know, there's there's no such thing as black romance. It's just romance and romance is for everybody or, you know, black is not a genre or African American is not a genre, and kiss my ass. Oh. <laughs> yeah. If you don't want to be called black, that cool. You know, I you don't have to be. You know, you don't have to refer to yourself as such. But to say something like black is not a genre or African American is not a genre after indies put the work in to build to build up our community. You know, that's not to say I'm not saying that we're responsible for black romance. You know, we we weren't first. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm not saying that. But this community that exists in 2021, the love and the reverence and the audience that's 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 here in 2021, we built a lot of this. And so for mm -hmm. people to come in and say, well, you know, I don't I, I don't I don't want to be put in the black section. Well, OK, you 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 go out to the broad romance section and see how easily your people can find you. Exactly. And that's the part that exactly. irritates me about that, because you're talking about, well, I want to be found by the mainstream audience. Maybe it's the mainstream audience looking for you. No, I, I we, remember when are we looking for you and right. we can't find you because you don't want to be in the black section. I remember before Amazon, when I used to go in Borders, you know how old yeah. say my age, when Borders was open and Barnes and Nobles and Borders was good at having a black section. Yeah. You could go in Borders and you could go straight to the black section and you would find what you were looking, something that you were looking for. You could even go in Walmart and they had them sectioned off in yep. a black section. So to say, I don't want to be in the black section, if I had to go searching, um, I think I would talk about my Barnes and Nobles, the one I mm -hmm. would go to. I, if they wouldn't have necessarily a black section, you would have to go searching and it would drive me crazy because I, I want to be able to go and find my black romance, yeah, whatever. If it's urban or whatever, I want to be able to go and find it. What I'm looking for, I don't want to have to search all over the world yeah. for it, which is what I love about Amazon, especially now with the algorithms. They just be sending you stuff that, <laughs> like, now I don't necessarily want that, but thank you, you know. Yeah. So, and a lot of yeah. times they won't even, they don't even shelve a lot of like I, I can't walk in a Walmart and get a black romance where I live. Like mm -hmm. they, they might, might have like Jasmine Guillory. Occasionally I might see Farah. like, and, and I mean, occasionally, mm -hmm. but other than that, I can't, I can't, I can't just walk in the store and get a black romance. So if there is no black section, I don't, <laughs> if I'm I looking for say a picture, they stopped doing it. it. Yeah. I want to say like Barnes and Noble stopped the uh African American section. I want to say it did. They did. They did. They they did. did. You, can't, you can't. It's mixed yeah. in. Yeah. yeah. I, I Akima, I did too. I love borders because they were depth. That would always be my yep. first go-to. And I had one right around the corner from me. Mm -hmm. That would be my go-to before a Barnes and Nobles because I knew I could find my black section and I could go in there. Now what's interesting, my target is like that CCJ. You ain't gonna find too many. Yeah. You know, um, you might find Terry McMillan's latest, you know, Andrew yeah. and Dickie, but you're not going to find just, you know, at least my Walmart would be, like you said, a fair. I, I, even okay. Carl Weber, when he was doing the Big Girl series, I would find all of those books. Yeah. That's how I came across um, Nikki Michelle and Brenda Hampton and, you know, um, all of them. So, Things have definitely changed. And you're right, indie artists, I feel like, have put Black romance and urban romance on the map and made it a whole lot more accessible. Um, yeah. 
to our community. I say our because I'm part of the community, even though I ain't, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a question for um, Lena. When you say you went to, um, what made you get, want to get into blogging and promoting um, Black authors? Now, I'm not saying you don't promote anything else. I'm just asking, you know. <laughs> well, I don't. How you got, so, okay. Okay. I, I don't. <laughs> I just want to be clear. Okay. Yes, my page is, is is only for black authors who write about black romance, I mean, black and black, like black woman, black male. There's no in between. And I got into it because, you know, I was reading. It was at one, po one po year I wasn't working. And so after I drop my kids off, I come home, do whatever, and I'd be reading. And then time fly by. And I'm like, oh, I don't waste, I don't use the whole day reading. But I was reading, and 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 Mercy um, actually had posted that there are a need for more black reviewers or black bloggers because there's a lot of white people who do it, but there's not a lot of black people who promote just black books. And I was like, well, that's all I read, so why not, you know, go have a page? And she actually helped me set up. Um, website or in an Instagram account and everything to get started and to start doing it. So that's how I got into it. I mean, and like with um, you was talking about like the urban romance, my first ever urban romance that I read or what I guess you consider romance, the bitch series by Joy, Joy Deja King. And like when, you know how you say that you have to read something fluffy after, I was paranoid after I read her series because I was thinking somebody is behind my back. But I loved it. I mean, and I I love that I love that that urban feel. And I still even when I feel like I get too much of I guess contemporary romance, I go back and pull up because I just need something heavy sometimes. So but you know, I I love writing about it and I love just letting everybody know, hey, definitely check out these authors because they're just as good as anybody else that's posting or that's out there and they need this recognition. They need to be out there. They need to be heard more than anything else. And these are our stories that are in books that's on paper that needs to be heard. And all, we don't have all the same happy endings or the same stories or lifestyles we it's the different complexities with us and they're writing about it and so i want to share it so yeah Michelle, how Michelle, did you get into you used to review um can i say who you used to review with rochelle yeah, you can. <laughs> with uh raw sisters right yes yes i did and I was rochelle was telling me that she used to get thrown a lot of the urban a fiction a street, a street literature what they used to call it street lit back in the days because at that time no one pretty much wanted to touch the street lit so we would have these books they would have she would um the founder of raw sisters t royal she would have the books the extra you know so she would be trying to find somebody to review those books because Everybody, she had her, her reviewers who pretty much picked like Christian fiction, uh, the regular contemporary fiction, but no one pretty much wanted to read the street fiction because they said it had a lot of typos and such. But you know, that was in the beginning stages. This was in 2000, so so that was how it used to be, you know. So I would pick it up and I would read it, and I didn't mind because I like street fiction. I, I I was I was in for it. I like the hard edge about it, and I didn't like always reading books with happy endings. So I didn't mind picking it up, and I also would pick up some. Some would be mixed in, would be mixed in with street fiction, and it would also have some homosexuality in it, and I'd pick that up too. So I didn't mind writing the reviews. One of my reviews, because I did, and the guy who wrote the book. He was Maya Angelou's protege. It actually, my review actually got into Savannah's newspaper. So, cause he used that review because back then nobody would, you know, review black writers. And I found out about Raw through, I'm going to go real back through Yahoo group groups. The, 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 the <laughs> Yahoo group. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I got into Raw and I was still living in New Orleans and, you know, and, but that was the early stage and I'm happy to have been a part of it, you know, to move it forward, you know, to with, with black 
literature is now because i think and she with raw we would do a lot of independent authors who nobody would touch and she wrote like thousands they had thousands of reviews that that the raw reviewers did you know and it was it was cool it was a cool experience i'm glad i did it so do you guys think that um when amazon started a lot of people to upload their um their books and everybody people started becoming um indie Arthur's that it truly, um, we kind of said it changed the game, but does it, um, it does not, I don't think, I don't feel as though it compares to still um, traditionally published Arthur's or is it now um, a fair, fair game? Is it fair game? Do you feel as though indie Arthur's are getting more publicity than traditionally published authors? I think the price point matters. Indie authors can set their price points lower than mm. published authors. You know, all, published authors, they're going to have to stay, charge you that stand to $12.99. While indie authors can charge $5.99, $3.99, you know. So, of course, that's that'll bring on more readers because of the, the, the price point, you know. And indie authors are all we you know i you guys i i, I give it out they they all over they they do the social media a lot of the published writers they don't take the time out to do that you know and the indie authors set up their groups their website you know the published writers rely on their publicists to do that type stuff so you know the access amazon has just given that access to everyone and i think that's that's great you know it's always good more access you know, but you with that it come has some challenges sometimes because there's more people in it. You know, and published authors are not getting that market like they used to have. You know, so they have to actually work harder now to push themselves out. And some of them leave their publishers because they think they have. You know, they know that they can, they have more access. You know, they can mm -hmm. do it themselves instead of you know um sticking with an editor who might tell them you gotta cut this or cut that or you gotta write this type book. So you know I, I'm sure the authors can play more into that, you know, B Love and Christine and you know, yeah, you guys can go more into depth about that, you know. I was gonna ask B Love because you're part of both worlds, the publishing part and as an author. Um and it's funny when I see B Love presents, I still don't think I know that you're their publisher but it still feels like they are independent of you you know um and i can tell you well i stayed up i don't do this i, I don't clubhouse i stayed up till midnight i'm old i ain't old but you know i be sleep <laughs> <laughs> but i stayed up last night and listened to monica and i had asked monica uh and uh brit this question when i went to um chancia's event before the world shut down um why not? Because I'm an advocate, and I hate to say that when I say that, because I don't want anybody who's a publisher, which I know Beloved is not that person, but I know there are some, I'm just going to put out there, some janky ass <laughs> black publishers <laughs> out there. Yeah. Those who don't know, you just don't know. Don't worry about it. Those of us who know the backstory <laughs> of it. Um, Rochelle didn't think I was going to go there. I but <laughs> I, I, it, so there was a beloved and I would see these janky people it used to gripe my spirit like why why would you sign with somebody and you put yourself on Amazon and so you got to split you put your book up on Amazon for $2.99 and you got to split that with this janky ass publisher and you know he she she sorry he she they is, um, <laughs> Janky. So, <laughs> be love. I heard my nothing. Hair back. I can't put you in that. I can't put you, and I would not put you in that category. I would not, um, because your your authors speak highly of you. Your character speaks highly of you. So, I don't have to look and be worrying about what be love doing her people janky. If somebody was to say, should I submit myself to be love? Absolutely. I've never heard, seen anything. You know, negative. So, how do you balance the true, the two, and allow your your people to still be them, where it feels like they are, even though they're under you, published by you? 
through you. Okay. Well, um, first, let me just go back to is it better or is it fair game? It's definitely fair game. Um, with us being able to do ebooks under Amazon, we get exposure and availability that we wouldn't get if we tried to go the traditional route. I've reached out to traditional publishers. I've gotten a lot of rejections and a lot of acceptances, and the money is nothing. I've been offered three thousand dollars for a book that I published myself and made almost thirty. So when it comes down to Amazon, it's definitely a better move when you're trying to be seen, when you're trying to maintain a bit of control over your career. Now, as far as why you would go to a publisher instead of self-publishing and becoming an indie author, a lot of people don't have the wisdom, the knowledge, the experience to do it on their own. They may not even have the resources to do it on their own edits, covers, all of that kind of stuff, that's expensive. Or they may not have the time or the desire to do everything. They may just want to write and that's it. They don't want to promote. They don't want to interact. They don't want to engage. They don't want to learn the technical side. They don't want to have to deal with Amazon uploading and all of that kind of stuff. They can't afford this. They can't afford that. So it's very appealing when you see and I, okay. I was signed to publishers in the past, one of which I can't talk about because <laughs> I would turn into Shanae and not be loved. So I'm gonna say it like this, it's very easy and appealing when you see publishers putting out books, several books a day. And you're thinking, wow, this person has a platform, this person has knowledge, this person has experience, they can help me get to their level to a certain extent. But you don't really realize a lot of publishers in the past have been all about that money. They don't care about the integrity of the books. They don't care about the quality of the books. They don't care about the author, their brand, what they're trying to do, the levels that they're trying to reach. So it was very easy from like 2014 to 20, maybe 17 or 18 to get caught up with a publisher who did not have your best interest at heart. What sets my company apart is my authors are under me, but they're still independent authors. That was the goal for 2021. I wanted to make sure they understood everything about publishing from a professional and business standpoint. So whatever happens to me, whatever happens to BLP, they're able to go on on their own and still stand in the industry and have success. So I told them. 2021, y'all are going to be indie authors. I'll be there to mentor y'all. I'm going to be there to support y'all. I'm going to put in the money when y'all need to, but you're going to learn how to edit. <laughs> you're going to learn how to promote. You're going to learn how to bring yourself. You're going to be top tier when it comes to the quality of your book. So nobody can ever be able to say, be love made you. I've been with that kind of publisher before and it's, it's very draining and discouraging and it makes you feel as if, well, if I'm putting in all this work and I'm writing all these hours and this is my voice, but they're getting a bigger profit from my books than me, or my books can easily be pulled and unavailable to my readers, what am I even doing this for? <laughs> so Build Publications is all about making sure that my authors are able to understand business aspects of publishing, um, grow as authors and business women, and create and establish your own lanes in the process. Okay. I'm not gonna say nothing else about it. I just know, you know, so I'll behave. Can, if you wanna go there, go there, cause I talk about them, but I'ma just let you know, I might lose a little professionalism. You go there if you want to, we can talk I, about You know that. what, you know what, he's not even worth, oh, he, you have no, I, I didn't experience, but the passion that I have for, for Arthur's, I mean, I could go on and on. We had a book club meeting the other week. Well, it wasn't this month. Was it last month? It must have been last month, Allegra. And they was like, oh, hell, Josh about to get on her tangent. Because <laughs> I was like. I think that was last month. Last month. And I was like, yeah. and so on, 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 so on. And they was, I mean. And I was like, okay, I'm sorry. Let, let's get back to what we was. <laughs> um, I just pray that everybody that experienced that, experience that will come on top and 
karma is a bitch. And when it comes back around, which I've heard some things have already come back around, but God ain't done because you can't do people dirty. Whether you, well, whatever you believe in, you cannot do people dirty and think that you're going to be blessed in any kind of form, whether, no matter what you, what your faith is, you, it's just not going to happen. So I guess that is one of the reasons why I'm a big advocate of indie authors, you know, um, put your own stuff out, be in control of your own stuff. But then I also have to listen to several people under, understand that they want to, like you said, they want to just write. They don't want to do um, the book covers and the editing. And some of them don't have the resources for an editor. And, you know, it's easy for us as readers to say, get you an editor, get you a proofreader. But some of them don't have the finances to do that. And it takes a lot. It, it takes um, a, a whole, I know it takes a whole lot to um, do that. You're right, Genesis, you can never uh, win when you're playing dirty. So I have a question for Crystal. Crystal is all over IG um, promoting her, um, promoting Black Arthur's interviewing, doing TikTok. I want to do TikTok so bad, but you know, when I ain't doing this, do it, I don't do want to be seen. It. When I'm not doing this, I don't want to be seen. This this whole <laughs> on the screen right now, CCJ. No, it's like no, nah, I won't do that. I'll I'll be in the back. I'll I'll push Rochelle and everybody else. Y'all do this for me. Y'all speak to me. Along with it, she pulled me along with it because I don't like it either. <laughs> she don't no. She oh, don't yeah. like it either. Go. For it. Yeah, go for it. My friends push me. Like I, I my friends, they like see. You guys are getting the professional side of me right now, but. I'm out of control. <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie. I'm down for anything. Like, let's do this in the back because I don't want y'all to see how wild I can get. So my friends was like, put yourself out there, put yourself out there. I was like, I'm never getting on TikTok. TikTok is the devil, like the devil. I'd be on TikTok at two o'clock in the morning, laughing, looking for videos. Like I literally write down what I'm gonna do for my TikTok videos. And it's sad, but I love it, and I didn't think I was going to get so much great feedback from doing it. So, yeah, I'm always thinking of something I can do. I found a couple that I want to kind of put out soon, so I just got to sit still and do it. But, but I like the whole when you're so doing much. when you're doing the ones when you're promoting the books and the whole yes. one with wasn't that Alexandra's house you had in the back and you was doing the one oh, with. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Dr. Phil, that's my man. I was just like, yes. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's a yes. great avenue of promoting. That is a great avenue of promoting and getting the word out about Black Arthurs and Black romance. And what they make you do, you know, how they make you feel. Like, literally, I had people sliding in my DM, like, that's my man. Like, girl, leave him alone. You can have this one, but you can't have this one. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, like we're going back and forth on my stories. Um, Alexandra House actually took and went on her TikTok and um, do it from my video. And I'm just like, oh, yay, I love it. So that's my whole main purpose is to basically put our authors out there. I won't even read... Um, I won't even read mainstream authors anymore. Like everything with me is indie authors. I, I'm reading sometimes four and five of them at a time it's yeah it's ridiculous like i read them all day while i'm at work it's it's out of control my dining room table right now and i swear if i turn it around y'all would think i'm crazy but i have books all over my table right now from books that i just ordered it's out of control <clears throat> but i love it like i'm addicted to buying black indie authors books That's i don't it. remember the last time i've read a but, mainstream person me either. I, I, the yeah. best, I, the best I, I, I don't know. Like CCJ turned me out when she started and was dropping them books left and um, right. Like I said, and then I went on. Yes. I went on a Nia Foster binge. I mean, you just there was so much going out there, and then there's always new people um, dropping. You know, constantly. 
constantly um, putting out um, um, new work. So did I ask this question? Where, where do we see Black romance going in the future? Straight to the top. That's what I was just thinking. We got a whole new generation of kids that are coming out. Like, if I'm going to tell you to read a book, this is what I'm going to tell you to read. This is who I'm going to tell you to read. And this is why you should be reading them. Because you see, you know, we have a chance to see people that look like us, a man and a woman, in love. Not like that little old love we see on TV, like in love, like how we see in our men being portrayed as we love our black women. We're going to ride or die for our black women. We're going to take care of our black women. We're going to raise our children as a, you know, we're going to work this out to raise our children together. So, you know, if that child is not seeing that in their day to day, at least we can give them a book and say, this do exists. You know, I can show you what real true black love is. And I, I mean, it's going to the top. I think it's going to be bigger than what we imagine we can't imagine and that is like my goal i want i just tell everybody people like what you read and i'm like oh nothing but black romance you read anything else no any self-help yeah if they ask me to but, but that's not what i want to read i want to read about you know how i met this man that i've been lusting after for years and then he actually loves me the way that i love him you know all of that and that's what I'm here for. And I cannot wait to see what's going to come out next from any of the authors, all of the authors that I read. I'm trying to fit in new authors, but I'd be scared I'm going to lose all of the old authors. Like, I don't want to stop reading them. So that's why I be reading so many books at one time. And it's terrible, Terry, but I do it. Terry said, um, audio. audio. There's there's a, I, I, I know that there's, a group of women, people that just love audio, but I can't see, and this is just my opinion. I would hate to see books just go all straight to audio where I don't have access to, to be able to pick up my Kindle or even, well, I don't, be in a box right now. I don't, yeah. can't touch my, you can't touch my books. <laughs> you can't touch them. I buy them. <laughs> I buy them for, to look pretty around my area. But you can't touch my books. So, when you, what, how do y'all feel about audio books? I know it's taking over. We need oh. black. We need black. <laughs> Rochelle is like, mm. see, that's what I'm saying. I, I, I have to read the books first I'm not before I do the audio. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. Have, it depends on the, the audio. Yeah. 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 Audio puts you to sleep. It's a fair <laughs> 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 oh my the audio, the audio audience is huge, and what I've discovered is that it's it's a completely different audience. Mm -hmm. Like it's a completely different audience. Like I'm picking up, you know, mm -hmm. from being, you know, from from getting my work in audio. It's 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 completely like it's completely different people, and um, I'm I'm not an audio fan in general, but I do think that um. It's, it's it's just different. It puts a whole new layer. It puts a whole new, it's like, it's a whole new spin. It's a whole new, mm -hmm. I don't even know how to describe it, but the first time I heard one of my books in audio, you know, it was, it was just completely different vibe. Leave that up, Ayana. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. But yeah, it was, it was just a completely different vibe, a completely different experience. And it made me even more excited for you know, for whenever, if ever, you know, I'm able to make that bridge into, you know, into TV or movies. Mm -hmm. But um, I definitely, I've definitely seen a whole lot of growth in audio. I don't think it's going anywhere. I don't think that ebooks or paperbacks are going anywhere either. Like, I don't, I don't think that that's, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't, I could, because again, it's a different market. Like, right. it's, it's, it's a different market. But, um, I've definitely been glad to see more and more of us come over to audio. Definitely glad to, you know, to have, you know, to have those black voices. Um, I wish that, <laughs> I wish that the audio audience was more open to, you know, to new and different voices. 
um, because it's expensive, you know, and mm-hmm. I know people have their favorite narrators, but your favorite narrator is going to cost me, you know, as as an indie, I'll just be transparent. The last audio book I paid for uh, cost me thirty five hundred dollars out of my pocket. <laughs> Nobody else was paying for that for me, you know. I had to pay for that. Um, and so it's an investment, you know. And if you want those, you know, those narrators who you love or who are popular or whatever, they cost money. And not only do they cost money, but they are they are booked and busy, honey. <laughs> right. Like everybody, everybody loves Jacoby. I had to talk to Jacoby back in November to get him booked for a project that's not going to get recorded for another few months from now, you know, and so mm-hmm. it, like they're, 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 they're scheduled and they're busy. So if we want more, it has to be, um, if we have audiobook listeners who, who are listening, you guys have to be open to new voices so that we can, you know, so that, so that indie can the industry. afford, right. yeah, so that we can afford to make that investment. Because if I make that investment in audio and then I see, okay, nobody's gonna, you know, I can't make my money back. You know, I can't make I can't make the money back that I spent. I, so I can't hire that person again because I can't make the money back that I spent. And so now that somebody who, you know, who may not be able to. Who might be an awesome voice, but you don't know because, well, it's not my favorite. And so I'm not going to listen. And so if you know, for any any audiobook lovers that are listening, I just encourage you, you know, to give new voices a chance. If you know, if you don't like them, you know. That's cool. <laughs> you know, I'm not selling, I'm not saying listen to anybody whose voice like grates on you or anything like that, but just at least be willing to give them a chance. Just like you, you know, just like you gave your fave. There was some point where they you hadn't you had never heard of them before, you know. So just be willing to give to give people a chance because we're we're just now stepping into this, like uh, the, the, you know, the black romance community and the black narrators. We're like, I was just talking to Wesley about this about a week ago. Wesley is one of the more popular black female narrators, but we're just now getting into this. Whereas our Caucasian cousins, as, (laughs) as love would say, they've been in this, you know, they, Mm -hmm. they've been in this and they've been, they've been, you know, building that ground and they've been building, you know, they've been building their audience there and we still have, we still have ground to make up. And I know as indies, it's the, the access, you know, we're all over social media and we're right there on Amazon and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But we still have so much ground to make up in terms of visibility and in terms of access to our work. Um, in terms of you know getting the media mentions and stuff like that, in terms of what gets presented to the mainstream reader as black romance, um, a lot of what is presented to the mainstream reader as black romance is actually interracial romance. And there's nothing wrong with interracial romance, but it is not black romance. Like those are two different things. And but there's been this really severe erasure of black romance in the mainstream lately. And I'm hoping that um, I, I, I actually don't have a ton of hope about it <laughs> just to be honest, but I would, I would love to see that change. And it's not a thing of, you know, it's, 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 it's not about what I want for myself because I'm good. I just want to see somebody get, you know, the money and the promotion and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Somebody who writes Black, been writing Black, you know, who came in this with, you know, with a real love and real respect and real reverence for Black romance. I would love to see some money get put behind someone. (laughs) You know, I would love to see someone getting those TV deals and getting there. You know, I I would love to see something like that, which would kind of, I feel like, I feel like that's the the ground that still needs to get broken. And I feel like once that ground gets broken and we can see like, you know, if I, if I go in Walmart, I I don't have to, I don't have to dig around to see a black romance because there's going to be somebody that is going to be, 
you know, that golden girl, like, you know how we think of black romance and you can easily point to Brenda Jackson. You can easily point to Beverly Jenkins. Who is the mainstream black romance author who writes black people, who writes solely black people that's at that level? There isn't one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There has not been one since then. You don't think you guys are on those le that level? Somebody walking up and down the street would not be able to tell you CCJ. You guys can. And I don't get me wrong. Like, I'm not discounting my community mm -hmm. whatsoever. No, I, I know that. I don't want for yeah. nothing. But, you know, when, but, like, for, like, the main, mainstream audiences, they don't know who we are. You know. I think that it's evolving. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Because I know what no, go ahead. the Lifetime, picking, you know, they're picking up some of the Black authors like Victoria Christopher Murray. Mm -hmm. Some of her stuff has been made into movies. Carl Weber, mm -hmm. his has been made into movies. I know it's still on like the, the Lifetime and the BETs, but it is something. You know, I think it's yeah. I it maybe, that's, I, that's why I see the future of Black romance that you said going to the movies where I can say yep. Christina Jones's um, um, book, Strictly Business, is now a movie on Lifetime. Hey. Uh, <laughs> on, on NBC, Girl, uh, I will be hollering. You know, something like that. You know, I remember that book. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> but I also see Me that. Me and Lena talked about that. that. <laughs> Now, I was saying me and Lena talked about that and we feel that, yes, we would love to see the books, but we don't want them on Lifetime because we want to see everything. We need like a HBO. <laughs> we need a cinema. We want to see the love scene. Right. Play. I want to see everything. <laughs> and cut these books out on Lifetime. And I got to sit here and I'm only seeing a little bit. I'm like, wait a minute. That's mm -mm. not what happened in the no. book. No. I want to see it all. <laughs> Yes, all of it. From the right. Judah to the Tudor, to the way y'all described, that's what I want to see. So, I want to see that. I want to see all of that. So, we need to be sending some of these books over to Will Packer. If anybody mm. know Will, I know. Know, get some books, get some of these books in his hands because as of right now, he's the man and he said, I heard him say, he was going to ride this train until the wheels fell off. So, you know, no shade to TP, but um, mm -mm. we need some no, real. No, I don't want no TP. I need the real thing. <laughs> no. I don't want no TP. I don't need him to make it funny, lighten it up, none of that. <laughs> right. You know. Right. 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 Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. We want to see all of You know, Tessa Thompson yeah. is actually, she's doing the secret lives of the church ladies. So, you know, I told um, Lena, I said, even Issa Rae, I can see her producing yeah. our CCJs, mm -hmm. our B-loves, our Nicole Ball, our mm -hmm. Love Bell. Like, I we need to, to I said, I just want to start hashtagging. Yes, we can yeah. definitely, and she just got a definitely. deal. She just actually got a big deal to do some work. Even Shonda, mm, yeah, Shonda, Girl, Shonda, Shonda ain't put no, she can handle it. Shonda ain't putting no black folks. Shonda ain't putting no, no black folks. I know all black. That is true. I all. <laughs> like no shade to her very right. talented yeah. woman yeah. bless but you know, what? You know right. may God enlarge her territory but, right. <laughs> yeah. but yeah. when CCJ made a good point about yeah. how um, how a lot of our a lot of books that people promote as black romance is really in IR romance. And I've seen quite a few bloggers who who do that. They'll say, oh, read this black romance. And I was like, that's not black romance. That's a girl somebody with a white boy, boy. With right. a white boy right there on the cover. <laughs> and I'm like, that's not like I mean it, let me tell it, you I, one of my pet peeves is is promoted as the cover is just a generic, I don't want to call it generic, but just a cover, no people on it. Um, and you write it in such a way that I'm at 50% and I'm just now realizing, which I mean, that's kind of good writing to a degree, 
But I'm just not realizing that this is a white dude. But now I'm totally vested and I got to ride it out. But I'm pissed because I don't, I don't, I'm not hating on nobody. Who, I have to do these disclaimers. I don't <laughs> read IR. I don't date white men. I don't, so it does not appeal to me. That doesn't appeal to me. I'm not hating on any black Arthur who writes IR. That's what you write. You there's a there's a a whole genre of people who love that. I can give you a perfect example. We had somebody at the event in LA, and it was her fans were there, and I tried to get these ladies to go into the into the I was gonna say breakout room. See, I've been teaching Zoom too long to go into the um, panel discussion and meet because I I feel like you're gonna meet some new authors. Okay, them little old ladies was like, mm -mm, we're gonna wait till so and so go. And I was like, but it's a whole 15 other people that you can go and, and you know, find mm -hmm. some new artists. They were stuck on what they wanted. Wanted to read. Yeah. They want what they wanted to read. So I have no problem with that. I just don't wish to read it. And I don't like to be, feel like I'm bamboozled into mm -hmm. reading it. Tell me up front that I, I know that um, what I'm reading. <laughs> I want to know. No, she don't like at all. Well, no, at all, at all. Y'all to turn Terry whole news. She does not Terry not know. She right now. You already know. <laughs> she she <laughs> already <laughs> know. That's so yeah. <laughs> yes, you already know she's somewhere. She's bunched up, ready to go in. It's so bad griping. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but um, <laughs> um. So don't bamboozle me. No, right. I don't want to be fifty percent into the book and then find out it's a you know, it's it's a it's a white guy. You know, I feel like you're straddling the fence then with some some authors who do that. They're trying to trying to grab our attention, but still hold on to them those people over there. And but you know, no. But my my biggest issue is with bloggers who <laughs> who do it, who who throw out there. Oh, this is a black romance book, and it's it's clearly not a black romance book. And so, why do you think they do that? Are they are they what do they have to gain from doing that? And especially if you are, I won't step on no toes, but especially <laughs> if you are a black woman. Mm -hmm. On top of that, I I don't understand it. It it, it baffles me how you don't want to support us. Or um, yeah, that baffles me. I think they I want the attention. I think they they they're trying to play both worlds. Like you know, someone made a, a statement earlier saying that right now black romance is hot. It's the thing everybody wants to be in it. Everybody wants to talk about it. But at the same time, when I look at your page. You you ain't talking about it, you know. You right. post things here and there about it, but when I when I scroll down your timeline, there's nothing about black romance on there. I and see I think more IR than I see. see. Yeah. yeah, right. And I think they're just trying to grab more followers in the sense of people following their page because they know that's what people are looking for and gravitating to. But then they don't. They're not. They're not advertising and they're not promoting it. They're just faking it in a sense. Yeah, Kima, Kima. Kima I just have an issue with them putting their, you know. So basically, like me and Lena have discussions all the time, and <laughs> she'll come with me and be like, "Did you see this?" I'm like, "No, I don't want to see it because I know how I am." So basically, I just don't like the fact that they're pushing their agenda on us. I don't get on your page or I don't get on my story and say, you know, you need to read nothing but black romance and no interracial or none of that. I feel like if that's how they feel, let it be how you feel. But do not make a big issue and push your agenda on what I'm reading or that black romance doesn't mean anything. Black romance mean everything to me because last time I checked, I'm black all day, every day, 365 days, you know, and I'm not going to change color overnight. And I mean, like I said, I have read white romance. I um, mean, I like white romance, but once I found out about black romance, that's all I want to read. 
And I just don't understand why the bit why it's such a big deal right now. Like, I understand, yeah, black is hot, but black has been hot for what decades, centuries, years. I'm confused on what's the big issue right now, on why they're making it such a big issue. That's my only thing. Because we, I agree. I, I, the reason why they're making a big issue, I think, in my opinion, because we're going towards this multicultural country and it's all about <clears throat> people of color. It, the, the terms are changing and that's why it's, it's an issue now. I, I, that's just in my opinion, coming from a library point of view, that's, that's you know, it's all about inclusion, inclusion bringing in everyone and having it multicultural and that's that's what the the big thing is you know and even if it's even if it's a african american woman with a latino male it's all about inclusion when you select in books and you highlight in books you know coming from the library cuz i oh. that's my regular job as a is a librarian so that's that's some of the things they tell us to look for you know. Pay attention okay, to so the commercials me... that are on television yeah, now. Oh, Pay yeah, attention. now, definitely. You, definitely. Every new commercial yeah. they have, it's an yeah. interracial, it's an interracial couple. couple now. Yes. With their little yeah. designer kids, because that's what they're yeah. creating, designer kids. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, that's, that's, that's basically what it, it, that's the culture right now. That's what's going on in our country and across the world, really. You yeah, know. and my thing with it is again. Yeah, I mean, know, we are. I think that. Time, yeah, it's like I think that interracial relationships deserve a place. People who are in interracial relationships and are products of interracial relationships, they deserve to be seen too. My issue is that instead of taking space from overrepresented white people, they take the space from. Black people <laughs> who are also still underrepresented and then they gaslight us and tell us, well, this should be good enough. This is the same. Like I've even had black women. I've had black authors, you know, girl, have you read? Our thing is, you know, we 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 push black romance like that's what our you know, that that's that's what our mission statement is. I've had black authors who reached out to be on Girl, Have You Read? with our book and we say to them, you know, hey, you know, and we're like perfectly nice about it. Like I've even been the one, this one particular one, I responded to her and I was like, I'm so sorry, but we don't, you know, we don't do our, here's some other websites. I gave this woman other resources, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Welcomed her to, you know, if you write a black couple, please come back. We love to, you know, we love to promote your black romance, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And girl, that thing got on Twitter and told and told them folks. I told her her work wasn't black enough. And I'm bitch. Ain't nobody say that to you. <laughs> if you can't tell, I'm still mad about it. <laughs> I'm still mad about it because she'll find places every once in a every once in a while to still come back and antagonize. Girl, have you read? We put up a love letter to black romance authors. You know, don't let anybody you know put your work in a box you know, blah, 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 blah. And she's, but are y'all still telling people they can't write white folks? Ain't nobody told you you can't write them. Ain't nobody <laughs> say that to you. <laughs> but how are you a, you are a fully ethnically black woman and you have a problem with a platform who instead of us sitting around complaining about who wouldn't accept us, who wouldn't do this, who wouldn't do that. We did something about it. We created a platform for it. That's great, yeah. And you want to come here and tell us that because we don't, because we won't promote your book with a white man on the cover, we're doing something wrong. Like that's the type of stuff that gets me. And then these are the type of people who now in 2021, you get to, you, you, you're, you're hosting classes about, telling people how, how how to write inclusively and you know how to do this and how to do that. And you're on all the black romance lists and oh my God, it, it grates me. And I shouldn't go here. <laughs> go I really, ahead. I, I really go shouldn't ahead. be going here, but, but, but it, it just, it, it really, really grates me. And I understand that people grow and they grow up and they change and all of that, but I'm a Pisces and 
don't, I don't care. Once you show me, <laughs> you got that one time to show me because it's a lot of people, a lot of black authors, especially in, in that traditionally published segment. And a lot of those people that are over in Romance Landia and all of that, who, who did not support Girl Have You Read as a platform because we were strictly black romance. Yeah. But now they're now they, you know, now they, they they Malcolm X on Twitter now, but they wouldn't support they wouldn't support Girl Have You Read because we were strictly black romance. And that that just, just that, know, that great me. Look, I want to trademark romance land to you because I really like that term. <laughs> well, I didn't I didn't I didn't come up with it. That was their <laughs> that was their term for themselves. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they are they they are preaching from a soapbox on that side with yeah me. yeah but it's like like we said it's like it's 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 cool now you know to you know to write black romance and you can get into a space like that and you and now you speak for black romance in that space when secretly you know a year or two ago you didn't you black you you, you, you were retweeting it. right you were retweeting hashtag black is not a genre oh my lord Oh yeah, I remember that. I remember yeah. that. And that's when CCJ and I sort of had a conversation because I was like, I don't wish to, to do any more um <laughs> I are Arthur's <laughs> for Indie Love. And she was like, Well, Josh, I don't know how you're gonna do that because you didn't start off. I mean, yeah, it started off like that, but I didn't verbally say it so then it looks like i'm switching up but then i decided i didn't care i i didn't care um you can do whatever I, you want you are I, in the love you can do whatever I, and you, you want. right and if you if you let people as they say even in our industry of promoting put us in a box then we'll then we'll be forced to do things and promote people that we don't necessarily want to promote i own the llc on indie love and i can promote who, when, and what <laughs> I want, <laughs> when I want to. So that is my stance. It's always been my stance. And I tried to go a little different and it didn't, it didn't work out for me because they offended. I won't say they offended, but they was in some of my artist faces and it was like, girl, go to that. <laughs> Go sit down. Stop I trying just to convert. realized what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, go. I'm trying to convert them to this. Please, this is not what you know. What I mean, so sorry, y'all. So, you know, I have a I have a question for you though. Um, do you have authors that come to you that want to write um, IR, and how do you handle it? I don't want to step on no toes though, but I'm just asking. You. <laughs> We've done it in the past, um, mainly because I've had authors who write AA romance, but we're in IR relationships. And so mm. me trying to be, what's the proper word? Me trying to be a good and accepting, inclusive publisher. I'm like, okay, if you want to take some projects to write what you know, write what you know. 2021 and beyond is not going to be happening that way anymore, mainly because I feel like when it comes to interracial authors and romance, there's a certain level of privilege and force upon black romance that's trying to get them into doors they shouldn't be walking into when there are doors already open for them that mm -hmm. we don't even have access to. And it, it irritates my whole soul when I go to say, well, research was popular on the African-American romance and urban chart. And then I go look for myself and it's a white person on the cover or it's interracial romance. And I'm trying to build up black authors writing black love stories. So how am I going to get them to understand the power of what they are, what they have and what they're doing? when so many outside forces and interracial authors and books and all of that kind of stuff are slowly trying to take their spots. There's mm -hmm. a whole interracial chart, but you start on the African-American romance chart and it's hitting number one. It's number three. 
and I got the stroll to top 10 to see the first true African-American romance. For me, I feel that way with any type of book that is not in the properly <laughs> sorted genre. So that's with urban, that's under romance, that's not being marketed correctly, interracial, women's fiction, erotica. I'm that way with everything. It's not just interracial specifically. If you're not mm -hmm. writing the genre that you are trying to market yourself as and publish yourself as an author of, I can't deal with that. <laughs> so right. yeah, I have a problem with it. I have a problem with the privilege. I have a problem with the force that's trying to make people accept things that they just have a personal preference not to accept, but that's with everything. Okay, so do you guys think that, how, okay, so how does, is Latin, a, a, a black woman and a Hispanic, Latin, how, I don't know, I don't know the terminology, is that considered black romance or is that considered IR? Look at Allegra, Allegra. Absolutely is, not. <laughs> It's, it's <laughs> interracial. Listen, let me tell that's you that's still interracial, correct? It, it, is. it, it, depends. it is. It depends. It depends because some Latinos are Afro Latinos. Latinos. Some Latinos yeah. are black, and so it really depends. Like I think, like Puerto Ricans. Well, I don't know if they consider themselves black. Some people mm -hmm. consider <laughs> Puerto Ricans and Dominicans know. black, <laughs> but then like Cubans and like specifically like Spanish people, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I think that you are racially white, the, the spicy white. <laughs> I hope that's not offensive. I, I don't mean to be offensive to anybody, but that's, you know, is spicy white, like Ita people who are Italian and stuff, like you're white, but you're not like American white, like you're, it's different or whatever. But there are definitely like, people who are Latino and black. And so I think that would be black romance, but it's not blanket, I think. Okay, okay. Yeah. What were you gonna say, Allegra? I, I, let me tell y'all, coming from, coming from New Orleans, <laughs> the whole, I'm, listen, I'm about to tell y'all just don't even understand. Rochelle may understand because she I comes from New Orleans, but <laughs> there's this whole if you're light skin, you come from a certain area of the city. <laughs> you know, if, if you dark skin, you come from a certain area of the city. If you light skin, there are certain things that are expected of you. And I disagree with that wholeheartedly. I remember. Uh, my first full-time job was I worked for the sheriff's office in Orleans Parish. Um, and I remember one night I was, I worked in a jail. I remember one night I was working in um, the control room and there was this chief, he was on night duty and he came in and he said, um, he said, you in here by yourself, baby? I said, yeah, I said, but it's only for another couple of hours. Uh, my partner for that night, she didn't come in until later. He said, well, where is she? I said, well, she's in school. So she works a different hour. She works different hours than, than I do. So he said, oh, she's in school. He said, baby, where you from? I said, from the seven ward. He said, the seven ward. Passe Blanc, baby, what you doing working here? You need to be in school. And Passe Blanc means pass for white. That's for white, yeah. So, and I'm just looking at him and I had never in my entire life been so offended before because you, you can't tell somebody because they're a certain color that they should be doing something else. My grandfather was black as night, black as night. And he was Creole. They have people here that believe Creole means light skin, long hair, you know, long, soft, straight hair. <clears throat> my grandfather was black as night and was Creole. So I have a whole problem with what people uh, or who people consider black. And then I, I, I have a problem with IR because I feel like as a woman, coming from a woman, I feel like 
black men don't always choose us. We're fighting for them. We're literally grinding for them. We are raising them and they don't choose black women. And that's a problem for me. So I, I don't, I don't like to identify any other race as being black. And that's, that's just me. That's just me. You know, I just don't like to identify another race as being black. I understand. Yeah. I'm right there with you. And piggyback and piggyback off of what you just said, Allegra. I think that's why that that interracial thing has blown up because it's, when you go on Amazon and you see BW, you know what is it? Black women, white men, WM. That whole thing to me when I first saw that, I thought I was offended by, it, but I get where some black women enjoy reading that because we've been taught down upon for so long and not been selected by black men and they've read they come up reading you know romance harlequin and they see these white guys and all of this and some black women may feel that for the first time oh the main character the hero is selecting a black woman and they get off you know they get that they because they come up from childhood up until adulthood, and now for the first time they have books that's saying that white women, are, I mean white men, are actually selecting black women. That's a that's a go-to factor for some black women. You know, that's that's why that R I R thing. You know, I, I can't be wrong. You know, everybody have their choice, but to me, that's what I see that some of them are selecting because when you read them, is is that, but. Like you say, we we want to be loved, and everybody is dropping a dime on saying black women aren't this, and black women have the highest debt. And for the first time, they see it. But that's why that genre, I think, is blown up. But it shouldn't be cataloged with black romance because it's now like, I need to stop saying that BW because see, for me, yeah, BBW, me that yeah. means that I'm when I first saw mm-hmm. it, ignorant on my part. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is about a BBW, big black, beautiful, you know. Yeah. And then it's not. It's about a black woman, white man, millionaire. Yeah. And I'm good. I'm like, you know what? You done got but, me again. But that's a marketing tool Amazon has come <laughs> up with <laughs> to to get those readers to just go get those books and then they'll group it all into African American literature. You know, and right. That, that's where the, the 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 foul part is coming into, you know. It's just because that. I'll see that in my algorithm sometime, and I'm like, I've never picked. Why is this even at the bottom an option for me? Because I've never, mm-hmm. I've never read this. I've never chosen this. How are you sending this to me, saying, "Oh, we found you something"? Don't find me nothing. I find my own. Mm-hmm. Don't don't help me. Because the way it is grouped. <laughs> It, yeah, because it's grouped in African American literature, and because you read African American literature, that's why those algorithms are sending you those BWWMs. Because whenever those authors upload those books, and I, I'm sure the writers, can, authors can say the same that they uploaded with that sub category, that genre, like what Beloved hit, they put it in that genre, you know, that is African American literature. Huh? How what? I love it, Lizzie Clark. Time I got excited, like yes, it's a story about my juicy ass. So disappointed <laughs> when it was. <laughs> I thought the same thing. I really like, did. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and <laughs> but that's, that's yeah. I've had that on Amazon when I'm. For the author to put in their full name because if I start looking for a book for um by Christina C. Jones, if I put in C H R I S, it's giving me a whole bunch of white authors. That's not who I'm looking for. I so now I have to put in her full name for only her book to pop up, but then we're still getting <clears throat> some of the white romance pop up. So I don't, I mean, I understand that they're here to sell them all, but how. You know, I want to know what can I just put in on Amazon and you just pull up nothing but black indie authors. 
you know, I don't want everybody else. I know who I'm looking for. So now I have to know how to spell people name correctly or, you know, making sure I know the title of the book. But even if you put in the title of the book, we're still getting white authors whose titles are I believe are close those mainstream or- uh, companies are paying Amazon to do that. I I believe that they are paying extra for that because if you type in CCJ's name, there's going to be at least two other books on top of that list. That's going to say either top rated or something. And you have to scroll down those, those publishing companies are paying for that. Yeah. Yeah, You can definitely in Amazon. Yeah. 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 No, I was going to, I was going to tell you to go ahead. I think we're saying, I think we're saying the same thing. Like you can, Amazon has a marketing system, you know, with ads that you can pay for. You can definitely target certain names. And so if they know like the certain names that sell well in that, in that genre or whatever, that is absolutely like that absolutely happens. And that's why you'll see those and it'll have like the little sponsored tag or whatever, or it'll have, it's not real obvious that it's an ad, but it is. <laughs> and that and that's why that's why that happened. But they definitely, definitely do that. But you know, it all it all just ties into kind of how we how we opened opened it up, you know, talking about why we love, you know, black romance and you know, speaking to what what Allegra was just talking about, how it's like this push of of us not choosing us and it's not even and, and and again it's not like i'm saying that we that like like that we have to choose us but we do choose us and off like we often do choose us and if you go to you know a lot of the amazon charts if you look at tv if you look at the commercials if you look at movies and stuff that's not what's often portrayed, you know, and even, even in real life, you know, even in real life, like I've definitely, I've I've definitely seen it, you know, I've definitely seen it definitely, you know, and I don't mean like as an auxiliary thing, I mean, like for real (laughs) seen and experienced that, but it's so important to me to show us choosing us like, I don't even like somebody mentioned uh somebody mentioned earlier about it being more lucrative and like that's what I see a lot you know people will say like black authors who write Caucasian characters you know might say and and you see people talking about it and they'll say oh well it's probably because it's more lucrative or it's probably because it makes more money or it's about the money but my thing is and it is 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 I'm trying to figure out how to how to say this um, without it coming across offensively because I don't mean it offensively, but uh, just say it. <laughs> like I like I like I don't hurt for anything, and I have always been about this black romance thing. Like since I I've been about it, still about it, always gonna be about it, and. I have been incredibly successful. And so when I see people say, well, maybe it's because it's more lucrative or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I don't understand that. I'm, I'm honestly like, well, damn, how much money you making? Because, (laughs) you know, like I know personally so many, you know, of my peers who left, who, who left their steady paycheck job to do this, you know, full time. And so when you say that it's more lucrative, it's it almost it almost feel like feels like that's just an excuse to me. Like I would and I mean, not that anybody has to run why they write what they write by me. I'm 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 not anybody for you to need to run it by. But it's like, you know, if you just feel if you if you just feel the need to write, you know, black women being loved by whoever, you know then, okay, that's your passion. Do that. If you're in an interrelational relationship and that's what you want to write about, that's what you're passionate about. Okay. Do that. But because that's what you know, right. It's like, if that's, if that's what you're passionate about, you want to, you want to show, you know, diversity and you want to like, if that's really what you're passionate about, absolutely go for it. That's beautiful. But don't use money as an excuse 
because there's money to be made in black romance too. And so it's like, it's almost, it's, it's almost like you're saying, well, I do it for the money because maybe you feel like that's a more acceptable answer. And my thing is, and this is me talking, <clears throat> you know, the I, I, I this girl, you ain't got to prove or explain nothing to nobody. <laughs> if you like white boys, you like white boys. That's your business. <laughs> you ain't gotta you ain't gotta put no disclaimers or excuses on it. If that's what you want to write, that's what you want to write. And you don't have to, you know, you don't have to make it seem like it's about something that is really not. You know what I mean? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Uh Ayana, y'all hear me saying Ayana, she's in the background. <laughs> Ayana, put the one back up about if you can, if you still have it. Um, the lady who said she was a um librarian in 1968. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, she says she's dating herself. When I got my degree in library science back in 1968, all books were classified as fiction, nonfiction, biography, and autobiography. I think the problem started when we began to add all of these subgenres. Terry Macmillan's book, Disappearing Acts, Card Catalog, Card Set Fiction, Black Arthur, Black Man, Black Woman. What genre will we place that book in if it was written today? Yes, I am from the car catalog days. That was my Google. It would be black romance, right? Uh, African American fiction. Yeah, uh, I don't American think it would fiction. be considered romance. I, I, I would call it African American fiction. That's mm -hmm. what. Okay. That's what I would place it. It would be. It would be fiction. F I C, and it would be, of course, because back in the day, well, back in the days, it would be fiction. Well, it's still. When you go in there and look it up, it would be fiction, M C M, and I'm, I'm sure. But she's saying if it was placed it was today, directly. where would it be? Still, it would still be the American same fiction, uh, um, contemporary fiction, either one. It would probably go. Into okay, so okay, and I'm then we're gonna wrap this up because I don't want to take up all of y'all's afternoon. Oh, you know, Wait, hold on, women's fiction too. It can go into that category because yeah. Terry McMillan. Is ca um, classified sometimes as under women's fiction, just like Toni Morrison. Same thing. Okay, because I was having a conversation with um, I don't think she would mind Bailey yesterday, and we were um, we were talking about some certain books, and we were saying how black romance is at the end is a happily ever after, whereas some books are categorized as black romance, but it doesn't end in black romance. Do you all agree with that? Or do you is, is there technically a difference? Like you're saying, disappearing acts would be considered just African-American fiction. Is yeah. that how that some book artists is traumatizing. Should... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the yes. book and the movie. <laughs> Frankly, yes. that, that is Franklin was trauma. <laughs> no, that I'm, wasn't I'm, a happily, was a good, that wasn't was a, a good book. That wasn't an ATA <laughs> at all. Yeah, at yeah. all. I, yeah, I think that yeah. if you're calling your book a romance, it should end in either yeah. an H E A or an H F N, which is uh, which is happily for now. Which honestly, if we being for real, for real, all books, all relationships are happily for now uh, <laughs> because <laughs> we don't know what he gonna do. And notice, I said he. We'll know what he gonna do in any of his stuff. <laughs> so all of them are technically happily for now. But I think that um yeah, you know, that that that's basically it. I think that if you're gonna call it a romance, you know, it should the, the couple should be happily together at the end of the book in some form or fashion. They don't have to be married or you know living together or anything like that but the couple should be happily together at the yeah. end of the book if you're going to call it a romance and then and then just so any authors that are watching this will off in my opinion will help when you get those reviews saying i didn't like it because they didn't end up together and so i'm giving it three stars because they i thought they should have da, 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 da. And we thinking, and I don't, I don't do that. But we thinking that it's a happily ever after romance, and it's not. She, she, I, I will say though, I will say though, y'all don't be looking at the categories because I have books that I did not put in romance. I might put them in women's fiction. I might put them in erotica, but I will not put them in romance if that does, if, you know, if if it's not super, super, like for real, for real, for real romance. Like I think Wonder, I don't think I put Wonder in African-American romance, 
But mm-hmm. because we have, it goes back to that box thing, because if we have our things that we, you know, that we usually do, there's an assumption made based on our previous catalog that, mm-hmm. okay, this must be a romance too, because this is what she does. Right. So, there's kind of some give and take on both sides of that. <laughs> True, but then sometimes when you guys are very, very clear, people don't listen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> sorry, sorry, not sorry. People don't listen. Yeah. They they assume a lot of things. You know, um, I'm a, I'm not gonna lie. Um, Sheree, Sheree, Sheree Lewis got me. She got me. I thought it was an H E A, and it wasn't. I love the story and she might, you know, don't be mad at me, Sheree. I mean, it was an awesome story, but I was in my, I was so in my feelings. I was so in my feelings. Let me ask you a question about thing, that, like, Joss. Okay. She had you in your feelings about that book. When Did you do a review on it? No. Okay. So one of my pet peeves with people with their reviews are, if the author writes something they are not happy with, <clears throat> they base their reviews on that. Yeah, right. That's Why wrong. are we not basing our reviews upon on the storytelling? The, exactly. what, was this exactly. a good story? The, the Whether you like exactly. the ending or not, was yes. this a good story? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Development, all of it. Yeah, I'm trying to find something I can I search in myself with. <laughs> so we review based on we, what's in. And, the pages. The book. <laughs> right. What's right. Because myself book. personally, I don't, if I did not like a book, I won't review it because I, I don't refuse review it. To give somebody a bad review. I refuse. Mm-hmm. If I, I can't refuse, give yeah. you four stars or more, I'm not going to do it. And, and that's one thing but, on my page. If I don't, yeah. if I don't like a book, I don't post about the book. And so, because my thing is, is that just because I didn't like it doesn't mean someone else won't love it, you know? So I don't want to make it to where that it turns someone else off from it and they may love the book. So if I didn't like it or if it's three or below, mm-hmm. I don't I don't post about it, nor do I give it a review. And I agree with you when you said that, Allegra, when you said, you know, when, when someone does a review about a book and it's all about their feelings about what's all this, how they went through situations and things like that. It's a story. I read to be taken away from this everyday reality. (laughs) That's what I read for. And if it does that, and if it did that, its job, then I'm good. I don't base it off of just because of, you know, how I didn't like how the author didn't have the characters do what I wanted them to do. No, that's, that's not what I read for. So... Yeah, I'm not good at writing reviews. It's not that um, I will give it the stars on um, Goodreads. I'm just not good at um, writing the reviews. Even the, even um, on my website, we've kind of adju- I've adjusted um, what we're reading now to just the synopsis of the book because I had one person. Roz was doing my reviews um, for me, and I know it became you know a lot. So I changed the synopsis, but and I had a couple of people who wanted to submit reviews. And if you was giving it something wrong and they fell out with me because I wouldn't share it, I'm not going to put on my website, you bashing a book. What I look like, I'm promoting independent artists, but I'm going to go ahead and put up on my website, you bashing a book. Hell no, I'm not doing that. So I, I switched it up, but I'm not good at, I mean, I am, but... So I don't want Sheree to feel like, oh, I'm that. I'm not saying the book wasn't good. It was a great book. <laughs> I was just in my damn feelings when I finished the book. I would recommend the book. I, I mean, it's not a, it's not, you know, it's sincerely, sincerely me. It's a good ass book, but I was just in my feelings. Just know you're gonna be in your feelings when you finish, and she knows that. She she <laughs> she but, says people give her a hard time about that book all the time, anyway. <laughs> But if if it if it sparks that type of emotions, that means it was a, a good like you say it was a good ass book because yeah. I remember Bernice McFadden. I don't know if anybody's read Bernice McFadden's books. I, I read. Books. I, I love that. I, I love, love her. her. 
But her endings will have you all in your feelings. Because loving Donovan, I'm still mad mm -hmm. that I have, they have not gotten back together <laughs> after all these years. So, <laughs> but it was a it was a powerful story, and I'm still thinking about it. Was this 15 years or so late? 20 years later. So it it was that excellent of a story, <clears throat> you know. So that was that stood the it stands the test of time. So if a book doesn't leave you with a good clean end to make you feel you feeling great about yourself but it it it, it moves you to you mad and angry you just want to throw it across and then slam the book across the room and then pick it back up and start reading again that's a great book that to me in my opinion that's a great book and you know so and i don't understand like you said when allegra said when you write a review and it's based on your emotion uh, because they didn't give you that ending. You're not the writer. You can't. You can't. <clears throat> how a person presents their art, so you can't say. It, but it moved you. It moved right. you. Yeah, and you shouldn't be writing no bad reviews like they say. I feel that way it. about um, Tayari Jones' books also, uh, mm -hmm. An American yeah. Marriage and Silver yeah. Sparrow. Silver her, Sparrow. Her stories are not considered to me. They are not considered. Happily ever after. They fiction. They be, strictly women's. Fiction. I wouldn't even say that's fiction. I read both of those books as real life things that would happen in real life. Yes. And yeah. they now actually see, they broke my heart, but they were it did. Ex, it was excellent storytelling. Yes, writing. They excellent. they now I read them. Well, I didn't read American Marriage. That was a, a book club choice for my other book club, and I was struggling, and I broke down and <laughs> listened to it on audio. <laughs> That's how I got through it because I listened to it on audio. I did enjoy it though. I did enjoy it, but I was having a hard time like getting into it and I was coming down to the wire on on my meeting. And it's like I can't go in here and not be prepared. So I listened to it on audio. And it it it, it was like you said, it was it wasn't it was definitely not a, a HEA. No. But like you said, it was real life issues that tugged at your heart, like, oh my God. And yeah. things that happen to black men every single day. Mm -hmm. Every single day. Excellent. Yeah. Well, we're coming up on the two hour mark, and I don't want to hold you all, ladies, because I truly appreciate it. Um, any final, well, I'm not, you know, final words, Michelle? You have any final words that you want to impart on upon the people with black romance? And I saw Brit Joni's message. She really trying to put me on screen every month. I don't know about that. I got to see. <laughs> I, I am excited. I'm excited that, and I am so proud that Black romance is where it's at now. And I'm so glad that we have so many wonderful books out that we can select, that we can choose, and authors that who, you know, interact with us and, you know, the reader, because sometimes you just want to say, you know, I love your characters. They made me feel a such, you know, certain way. It, I related to it. Their birthday is the same as mine. You know, any anything, you know, and I'm so happy we have that now. And I'm just excited that it will be going, moving forward. And because like, I started so long ago with reading Black fiction, and I'm so glad Black romance, Black fiction, it has gone in a whole new direction. And I'm glad to be a part of this, this group. I told that to Josh. So I was like, why you put me on camera again? I don't like this, but <laughs> look, Christina, the first indie love, I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to do the discussion. The, this, but she was like, I need y'all and I need so my my shy extrovert then came out today. So I'm I appreciate you all and this is this was wonderful. And you might have to do this once a month, Josh. Oh, well, <laughs> be love. Do you have any final yeah, words? She's ignoring that one, y'all. <laughs> um, if I could say anything, I would say for authors to make sure that you are writing the Black romance, the Black love stories that resonate with you, and for the readers to make sure that you are reading the stories that resonate with you. That's the only way we are going to continue to soar as a whole. So whether that's contemporary, radical women's fiction, urban, whatever the case may be, remember personal preference is personal. So just because you may not like one thing that doesn't give you the right to make it law for everyone else within our industry, write and read what resonates with you.
Thank you, Allegra. Oh, wait, before that, um, can I be, be lucky. I just, I mean, I've read a lot of your work. Can I just tell you, I wanted to move to that town where they match up, um, where they was matching up husbands and wives. I wanted to live there. Transition. I swear to God, I wanted to. <laughs> I, look, I, I wanted to get you live there, there. I wouldn't know which. <laughs> I wanted to live there because at 52, I'm still not married. I'm like, okay, can we just, somebody just match me up. I love, I'm just, please don't, don't. I was just joking. But I did want to live there. I love those stories. Okay, go ahead, Allegra. Uh, first, I just want to thank you for putting this together. And my final message is short and sweet. Live Black, buy Black, read Black, and love Black. Excellent. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> um, Elena? Any final words? Yes. Um, thank you for inviting me to this. I, I really enjoyed it. I, I read Beloved and Sissy J faithfully. So they they are definitely on my one click anytime they release. And I really appreciate you, Josh, for putting this to putting this together because through your, you know, through any love event, that's how I started really came home with a bag full of books. So I got into it like that. But I um you know, I'm always going to definitely support you guys and where, wherever I can, just let me know. And I'm encouraging everyone to continue to read Black Romance, you know, never give up on it. Just be every, everything, your life isn't perfect. Romance and books are not either. And that's one thing that I love about our books. So definitely I'm going to, you know, keep rolling with you guys till the wheels fall off and keep going. Thank you. Thank you, CCJ. Um, I'm gonna piggyback off everybody else and first off, you know, give you your props for putting something something like this on. You have long been, I'm gonna use the word pioneer um, <laughs> because, <laughs> because again, just going back to that first indie love, you know, nobody was checking for us like that. He said, you know, I wonder if I can do this. And I still remember. <laughs> Because y'all, I used to be a runner you? <laughs> without nobody chasing me. <laughs> I was running and I would be voice memoing um, like as I was out, like I, I wasn't actually running. I was walking, <laughs> um, but <laughs> I would be voice memoing Love and Joss, you know, and listening to Joss's her thoughts and everything about this as she was trying to, you know, as she was trying to pull it together. And it wasn't. um it didn't come easy. It didn't, it didn't come easy. You know, it took some, like some frustrations and some discouragements, but you push through. And like I said, like I'll, I'll maintain that indie love, like really changed the whole forecast and the whole landscape and just really set, um, just really set a different tone. Um, because it, it was not the first event I attended, but once I attended your event, it was like, okay, we need more of this. <laughs> you know, this is this is the energy, this is the vibe. And I just appreciate that from there, this this community just keeps growing, just keeps developing. I love that we have, you know, more black book clubs that are, you know, that are online and that are accessible. And I can I can go, I can go to the book club meeting. I don't have to be, <laughs> you know, I don't have to be there to, to, to attend the meeting. You know, I can come in on Zoom and um, like I can, I get to interact with readers and we have more of you guys like, um, like Crystal and Lena coming in to review for us and promote for us and really just help kind of solidify just solidify this whole thing. Like this is the anchor of all of this. Like this stuff is the bricks and the mortar of building a community, having different people in different lanes and different avenues coming together to make something beautiful. And it's like authors, you know, we we have our place, but if if it was just us and there wasn't anybody to talk about it, there wasn't anybody to, you know, to to make TikToks and to, you know, to, to, to offer those drink pairings and people who do, you know, the, the book club meetings like Bourbon Street Bookers and Indie Love, like <laughs> we just be out here with all these characters in our head 
doing what? <laughs> Being crazy, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> um, but you know, overall, I just, I just appreciate. You know, I appreciate all of you, the readers who, you know, who who came through and attended, and you know, left their thoughtful comments and just, just all of it. Like it, it, it really takes all of us, and I'm, I'm glad you guys are here. Thank you. Crystal, final words? Yes, um, I'm piggybacking off everyone else as well. Thank you for doing this. Thank you for the opportunity. I mean, I'm excited. I'm up here with B Love and CCJ. Like, I'm excited about this. So just thank you so much. Um, one thing I want to say is stay in your lane. If the Black romance is not your lane, stay out of it. Don't talk bad about this at all. Worry, as the little white girl said in the back seat of the car when she was trying to put on her seatbelt, worry about yourself. And if black <laughs> romance is not where you want to be, then worry about yourself. I mean, I'm here for it all. Like, I'm sitting here with my notebook and my pen writing down all the little TikTok ideas I'm about to start searching for because I'm ready. But all I'm going to say is worry about yourself and stay out of the black romance lane if you don't want to be in it. That's all I have to say. Amen. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> well, I think I truly, <laughs> I truly um, thank everybody for participating. Rochelle for coming out of her oh, shell. Be love for coming out of her shell. <laughs> um, Crystal <laughs> and. Um, Lena and CCJ, you know, I always call on CCJ. I know she had something else to do this morning. I was a little nervous and I told her, I understand if it's going to be too much. You know, I, I understand, even though you technically belong to me. I'm just kidding. But for <laughs> real. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, CCJ is correct. I mean, for those of you who don't know, I'm not going to take a whole long and talk about it, but Indie Love was an idea, and I tossed ideas back and forth with Love and CCJ. When she said we were voice memo, she was walking, I'd be at the track walking and just throwing ideas. And I just wanted to know what did Arthur's want? What they, you know, what did they want? I wanted readers to mm -hmm. come. I wanted them to have, I didn't want them to pay for parking. I didn't want them to pay for tickets. I want them to just come and give all the love to um the artists that's what i wanted and guess what for those of you who don't know indie love was supposed to be one year love wasn't having it tay's husband tay russ's husband i said this all the time love said it oh we we doing this again next year and i stood there like shell shocked like wait what and <laughs> tay's husband said so we're doing this again next year and it's like oh i gotta think on that and here we are six yeah. years later despite a pandemic Nothing has stopped us from moving on. I will continue to support in black independent authors. I will continue to support black romance, regardless of what my preferences are to read. I will continue to support um, authors, readers, bloggers, um, event planners. I try to share the love. Um, I want to bring Ayana, if she can come up real quick. She is part of Bourbon Street Bookers. Um, that's a uh, Allegra's partner. They have hit the scene um, like a storm and are doing awesome and great things. Mm -hmm. So if she can pop up here real quick. She's been in the background. Come on, sis. Show your face. The, um, girl, come nobody, come hair hair right right. girl, just come oh. say hello and then pop right back up. <laughs> yes, Ayana. Hey, right. hey, 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 hey. <laughs> oh. she, oh. <laughs> she said, hey, pop right back up. <laughs> Lord have mercy. So <laughs> I thank you. I thank you um, so much, so much. And for my team, I don't um, acknowledge them. I do acknowledge them. Yes, I yes. Uh, thank you for my, my small team that does help me on event days to get it together. Um, and if those of you are asking, no, Indie Love is not doing a live event in 20, what is this, 2021. It's a doggone shame. That's a damn shame. You the year mm -hmm. 2021 but um we are doing a virtual event in june um i do have quite a few authors already lined up um my love belvin was yeah. part of that yeah. processing team getting us together um 
And we do plan to go to New Orleans in 2022. So that's something to I'm look there. forward um, to. Thank you again, I everybody who commented. This will not stay on Facebook all day. Most of the day it might. There's 656 comments that I would like to get through. So it may stay on 24 hours. Yeah. I don't know. 656 wow. comments, y'all. I'm I I love y'all. Yes. I love this community. You I gave really, the people really do. what they needed. Just excellent. I love this community. So it will be if anybody missed it, it will be on um my YouTube channel um, for you to at, at, to enjoy at your leisure. Um, again, thank you, everyone. Um, and Ayana, you can go ahead and take us on out. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>